Alright, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are creating a simple foil texture for you to enhance your future t-shirt designs and what you're looking at right now is hopefully the end result. I'll show you a few other examples. Here you have the Gamer Nexus logo which this video was partly inspired by. So here we have another logo as well, don't know who this is. So let's have a blank mesh here to start off with. You can use a cube, doesn't matter uh, which object you choose to have uh, at this point. So you probably have the standard cube in the center of your um, project file right now. So select that or select your current mesh that you want to apply the material to. So select it and then press shading. Then let's have a look at what we can do. So we're going to create a new material first of all. So go down here and press new. You will be presented with a principal BSDF with a material output. I'm going to rename this new foil so I don't confuse myself with the other materials that I have. So let's uh, move this principal a bit out of the way. Uh, this is basically basically the controls we have right now. We have a color control which you can add a texture to and whatnot. But we're going to be creating a glossy material uh, to begin with. So pressing Shift A, I'm going to search and I'm going to ty start typing glossy. As you can see, it pops up here right there. Yeah, glossy, add it, bam. So I'm going to replace the principal BSDF, and there you go. And to create gold in this. Uh, and there you have it, I created gold. Fantastic, I'm rich. Anyway, uh, let's add another glossy and another glossy. Ta -da. And let's stack these on top of each other like this, make it a bit uh, more tidy. Uh, what we're going to do now is combine these. We're going to combine these to the material output so we can have a bit more control of the colors that we're going to be uh, representing in the foil texture. So we're going to be adding something called add shader. Just gonna add this straight away to this uh, glossy BSDF. So this and this, as, as you can see now, it combines these two and put it out on the surface. So if I change the color here to blue, you can see there's a bit mix of blue and yellow, which is purple. So by changing the roughness here, you can decide how much of each is coming through. And that add shader. So now I have a mixture of a bit of gold and a bit of purple. So yeah. So let's add the last one as well. I'm gonna just press Shift D and copy this one. I'm gonna route this one over here. My English is so perfect. Um, and there you go. Now we have three colors. So I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have a red. I'm gonna have a green. I have to have it in that order. And I'm gonna have blue like that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So there you go, you have red, green, and blue all embedded in this. And you can choose which one is more more pronounced and more highlighted than the other ones. Uh, let's go ahead and create our texture. I'm gonna use, let's see. Well, thing is, you don't, this is fine if you want the entire thing to be have a foily kind of texture, but we don't want that, we want more. Um, we want to add, um, want to mask out the logo. For instance, if you add a logo, we want that masked out. So let's add a, just a texture, image texture, which is which is down there. And we're gonna open that up and uh, tutorials textures. Where is the genius design? There it is. And we want that to go be displayed on the material output as well. But we can't do that right now because there's just one input. So we're gonna add a mix shader, mix. My pronunciation is going to be botched uh, here and there because my, this is not my native language. So let's have the color to be put into the factor. Now the fact I'm show you this. The, I'm going to put in shader there and shader there, ta -da, and share it out. This is a mix shader. It mixes them. Quite explanatory, right? So let's make this dark. There we go and. I don't want this, I want this to be rough and all specular because this is a t-shirt. So what this really does is switching between these two, the factor here between, okay, one, well, this one is uh, chosen and zero this one. So um, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, it's half and half. 
you understand the principle behind this. So what I want to is having the texture that I've created deciding who gets the precedence over um, the material. So let's just add the color over here to the factor. Uh, I'm going to try it again. Ah, genius. It works. Fantastic. And to show you what kind of texture you can use, you can use like uh, PNG with a transparent background. And to save it, you have to save it as uh, PNG. Easy. Yeah. And that's nice. Nice and all. And as you can see, I you don't want to have it metallic it's a t-shirt so you want to have it all the way down and it's not specular a t-shirt is not uh, well it could be but and the roughness all the way up so there you go it's that simple and if you switch positions like this you will see that the texture will be inverted the where the texture is will be where the uh, matte uh, texture uh, fabric will be so yeah yeah simple simple you you get the hang of this you understand it Let's go ahead, and as you can see, the it's not positioned precisely where you want it. So I'm just going to extend that. Uh, but the, but but this the extend, so just happens to wrap around like this. Yeah. So what you can do now is go to UV editing and select the select the mesh and position it um, like this, and you can. Oh, well, let's. Uh, you have to scroll through this and uh, so what you can do is select this and scale it and position it where you want it to be as you can see that, that works pretty okay um, this is not a tutorial about uh, UV mapping but I'll show you a quick tip so let's just select edge mode by pressing 2 select the loop there and just UV mark seam and select the edge loop over here as well uh, edge mark seam and what I also want to do is I can mark a seam over here and I will mark a seam under there as well so I will split it up in half like follow real seams the real seams on a real t-shirt and you will be fine so if I unwrap this now select all and I go to UV and then I just unwrap it as you can see it's selected and I actually have to do that, I see now. When you start seaming, you have to seam all the way through. So, UV, uh, mark seam, I don't remember the shortcut for mark seam, but that's fine. UV, mark seam, UV, yeah, you, you guessed it, mark seam. Uh, UV, mark seam, blah, blah, there you go. Select all, UV, and unwrap it. ta -da. So if I select all, I can see that I have my individual. I have the back and the front and everything. Perfect. So now I can just select this and move it out of the way because I don't want you here. And I only want the front. Center it, rotate, scale it, place it. There you go. That's It's that easy. So yeah. Now we have your genius design in the center. So let's head back to shading. We're not done yet. We've created a, we've created a simple foil texture now. So you can skip this, the rest if you don't. You, you're happy, if you're happy. You, you can skip the rest, I don't, I don't blame you. But we don't want a bit more sparkly stuff, yes. So to add sparkly stuff, we're gonna mess with the normals. That changes a bit of the reflection of the glossy shaders. So Shift A and then add, um, Voronoi texture, I think that will be this, yeah, I think that was what I used. So the Voronoi texture, add it to normal. And as you can see, it doesn't really do much right now. Even if I scale it, doesn't really happen much. And by the way, I'm going to add a texture coordinate, then add it to object so that it, um, so that the scale is uh, relative to the object that we're playing around with. So it won't, yeah, well, uh, won't mess up things. It will be a bit easier to manage. And if you're going to animate it, you can just add. Um, if you want to animate the sparkly stuff, you can just add something called a um, mapping texture. Add this in between here, and you can play around and move the position of the sparkles and all the thing. But we're not going to use that right now. So we're in the texture, and 
as you can see if we map this over to normal nothing really happens uh, if you zoom in well uh, well no, nothing happens boring you can try to add it to well whatever so add a normal we're gonna add a normal map I think it was yeah and set it to I think you can set it to object space I let's see we need to convert it to a normal map before we use it as a normal map so yeah so normal I'm gonna drag this to normal on every single one and by the way I'm gonna use cells because that was the one we used that's right yeah and this one should not be on scale this should be on vector and there you go Ta -da! and now you see you're starting to get this sparkly stuff <laughs> and you might be wondering how did I have the bloom effect there that's really simple let's just go to render engine EV and then just bloom if you didn't have that turn on you just should turn it on bloom is only acceptable in a rendering engine it's not acceptable in games well sometimes it's a single player game sometimes bloom is okay but a multiplayer game bloom that is well that's a no-go so anyway now you're starting to see where we're going with this and the strength is well you don't want the strength to be this harsh you can almost see the preview a tiny bit of well there you go it started to look quite sparkly so let's uh, scale it uh, up to 500 ish and well you can stop here if you want to but I like to smooth this out and when, to smooth out this uh, thing I just add a, a simple noise texture in between so noise add it in between and as you can see it smoothed it out quite a lot actually so you can change the scale here as well and the distortion and you can play with the values you can see if it yeah there you go so it's a bit smoothed out now just added a simple noise texture in between so it goes to this and then add it on top of that and blah 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 and then put the strength down object space and that's simple you have a simple 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 foil texture that you can use so the the, f the foils or or the sw uh, the individual individual flakes here uh, can be should be a bit smaller maybe I'm not hundred I don't know, I'm just trying to type thousand there you go thousand maybe thousand looks a bit more realistic doesn't it well that's nice nice easy you created your own foil texture so thank you for watching enjoy your day bye bye.